Razer and NVIDIA Studio asked if they could sponsor a video and send me the Razer Blade 18, Mercury Edition, which is the silver color, this insanely powerful laptop for me to make something cool on. And inside is an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 laptop GPU. I said yes because I thought it'd be a great opportunity to try something creatively risky, to make something that I don't really know how to achieve. Instead of just making something to show you, oh, here's how I would do this, I wanted to push myself creatively and make something fun. The first thing to do was to actually decide on something to make. And to me, that is actually one of the hardest parts personally. I struggle with being creative on demand and just coming up with ideas. So I asked myself the two questions that helped me figure out where to begin. What am I inspired by? And what do I have to work with? Casting was the first thing I needed to worry about, and I've been eyeing these robot characters from Pro Rigs for a while. I started looking at reference of Terminator, the Iron Giant, all kinds of different things. Knowing that I wanted robots involved, I went to a lot of sci-fi type of stuff to sort of set the tone and figure out the mood of what I wanted to create. And so I thought, well, if I were gonna try and put this into an actual like 30 second short film, we need to have some emotional stakes. And so I thought, well, if the big robot is trying to defend a child against this robot or an army of these other robots, it'd be a compelling little story that we could get invested in emotionally, and then we'd actually care what's happening with these characters. At first, I thought maybe I could make a whole 30 second short for this video, and I quickly realized it's way too much. I will just have to focus on one little piece. By the way, I'm gonna have links to everything I've used. There's also links to my animation classes, so check that out. A lot of people draw things at this stage. You start to do storyboards and things like that, but I'm not a very good 2D artist. So I decided to use the thing that I do best, video reference, because I can try a lot of stuff really quickly. I can edit it down and find the best takes. At this stage, I'm not worried about camera angles, but what I am considering is props and weight and thinking about the animation because not only am I doing this to plan the short, I'm also going to use this when I animate to figure out what the mechanics are in the body. So I was just trying different things to see what that looked like and how it felt. I wrapped that all up by retiming the footage to try and get the feeling of how would this play if it had to fit within 30 seconds. So if you can visualize and imagine things like a blast door being lifted or the camera cutting to much cooler angles and things like that, this is essentially what the mini short was gonna look like. The part that was the most flashy and the most interesting to watch on its own is probably the part where the robot's being shot by laser beams or bullets or grenade launchers or whatever it is I decided to put there because the lighting will be interesting. I actually really liked the reference. I thought it was kind of a fun choice. And I thought the sound design is gonna be the coolest. And as much as I wanted to do the whole fight scene, realistically, I only have so much time to animate because there's so many other pieces of the puzzle that I wanted to put together. So with that, it's off to animation. I plan on making this whole thing in either Blender or Unreal Engine, but the characters that I'm using are Maya rigs, and so I'm gonna do all the animation in Maya, where I'm most comfortable, and then move the data elsewhere when I'm done. The workflow I used for this was pretty unimaginative. I pretty much just took the reference and copied the majority of what was happening. The tricky part about this is when I acted it out, I'm moving my shoulders around, and I'm, you know, twisting and doing all kinds of organic stuff, but this big robot, he's a bunch of big plates of metal sliding around each other. He doesn't bend or flex in most parts of his body. And so I have to fake that feeling of impact and bending by physically pulling the arm sockets off of the robot and jamming them off the side of the mesh where they physically detach, but then just from the camera's perspective, making sure that it still looks good. By the time I got done with all the bullet impacts, I realized that I was kind of running out of time for animation and I needed to move on. So I threw a couple quick poses in by blocking in the main keys. If I were to give myself a quick critique on this animation of what I'd still wanna go back and fix, it's that the front leg doesn't move. His foot feels totally glued to the ground. I need to have it kind of shift or move or something. His back hand clips through the floor a little bit more than I would like. And I think the most kind of important part, as soon as he's done getting hit, he moves really quickly and he gets back into position and moves around way faster than he should if he's that heavy. He should take longer to start and stop his momentum and that needs to come across with again the feeling of weight and force. So there's more I would like to do with the animation, but since I was wearing multiple hats, I wanted to move on to the next stage. I brought everything over to Blender with the USD file format. I was gonna go to Unreal Engine, but USD animation isn't supported in 5.2, that's coming in 5.3, and I did not wanna use an Alembic cache and FBX was super not compatible with this character. So. Blender it is. With the animation working, the first two things I wanted to do were add some materials and also start figuring out what the environment was gonna look like. Because in order to figure out what the lighting is, like I need all of that stuff sort of in there so I can figure it all out together. For the environment, I decided to use Kitbash where you can buy a bunch of asset packs and then just build your scenes with all that stuff. They actually just came out with something called Cargo. You can just download and load the stuff straight into your software. So I tried that out and it was really nice. And what's funny, they literally just came out with Future Warfare. Oh my God. Is this exactly what I need? And I resisted it for a few days, 
ended up deciding, you know what, screw it, it's on sale, half off, I bought it, and uh, I used that for all the final assets. But with just some proxy stuff in there, I could figure out what the sort of lighting, shading, materials were going to look like at a base level before I actually went back and did the official environment. At this stage, I was trying to figure out the visual identity of the shot. Is it in the dark? Is the hallway lit? Are there red alarms going off? Is it more foggy, misty, I didn't know. And so that's where the whole shading workflow came into play of trying to figure out materials, textures, lighting. And since I intended to work with Cycles, the good renderer, that is so much easier to do in real time if you can, which is one of the big reasons why working on this laptop with its hardware was so helpful. So the Razer Blade 18 is Razer's desktop replacement laptop. That's the point of this one. It's not meant to be like the travel friendly laptop. This thing is, is heavy, it's big. And inside is an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 laptop GPU, which means that when I wanted to work with Cycles, in real time, I just say, go, and it goes. I can then play with lighting and adjust things all I want, and I don't have to wait for anything. But beyond the GPU, I think this scene is about like 28 gigs of RAM, which is good because this is configured with 32 gigs of RAM, so it's been fine. And the three biggest things beyond the internal specs, the screen being an 18 inch monster of a screen, also the fact that it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio gives us a little bit more real estate, plus it's color accurate. So when I do lighting effects, things like that, I know it's gonna look good. I've done a lot of videos over the years and I have done a lot of color correction where I'm like, this looks great. And then I put it on YouTube and it looks terrible because the monitor I'm using isn't color accurate. That's not a problem here. Next up is the cooling. There's an extra large vapor chamber and a three fan cooling system that as I've even rendered and like done everything, I have not heard the fans spin up more than once or twice. And even when they do spin up, it is not a jet engine on my desk. It just sounds like a laptop fan. It's not silent and like ultra quiet, but it's not that loud. And the last one is upgradability. One of the big reasons people get desktops is because you can upgrade and swap out components, also a lot of ports, and you can swap out and upgrade your RAM and your system memory with M2 NVMe solid state drives. And this is actually compatible with DDR5 system memory. And most importantly, it's all stable. Because it's an NVIDIA Studio laptop, it has the studio drivers. You have the game ready drivers and the studio drivers. And so the studio drivers mean that all the creative apps that you're using are going to perform optimally on this hardware in the most stable fashion possible. And while everyone knows that NVIDIA graphics cards are a big deal, you may not know that NVIDIA Studio is an entire creative platform. On top of the RTX GPUs and drivers, there's actually a huge suite of digital tools that help to power up over a hundred different creative applications, obviously including Maya and Blender. And a lot of these tools are free. I would highly recommend checking some of these out. And since one of their main goals is to help take ideas from concept to completion faster, you can see why I'm such a big fan. And look, I'm going to level with you. This is a sponsored video. A lot of what I shared is stuff that I need to share and stuff that I want to share. Like genuinely the way I say everything is the way I want to tell you stuff. Like I think it's important to know these things. I worked at Best Buy for a lot of years. Like I'm super into computers and technology. And so this to me is something that I feel very strongly about. And I wouldn't be sharing this if I didn't think it was good. This is by far the best laptop I have ever used for this type of work. It's not even close. And I don't, I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know if it is the big screen or if it is the specs and the power inside, but I'm very spoiled when it comes to computer at this point. I have a very powerful desktop computer. I'm very used to multiple monitors, large screens that I set up for this video. But the thing is, I, I haven't needed to use anything but this computer. I had it plugged in and I just never used it. I'm really happy that Razer reached out and wanted to do this video because getting to work with this, if I go on a trip, if I had to live somewhere for a couple of months, like if I had to do anything where I didn't have the ability to bring my desktop, this is coming with me. This is officially like the laptop I'm going to be using to do any serious work if I'm not here in my office. So I just wanted to take a minute to sort of like genuinely share that. I've really liked it. I will continue to use it. Stamp of approval, heck yeah. I just thought that was worth sharing. So let's get back to it. Now that the shot is starting to take shape, I figured now is a good time to actually start figuring out what he's getting hit by. I didn't know if there were bullets, laser beams, rocket launchers, I don't know. So I gave these an emission shader and just moved on. At this point, I started tweaking little things like the texture of the robot, trying to give him a little bit more surface imperfection and make it feel more weathered or battle-worn. And it was here I decided I wanted to play with the effects. I've never messed with Blender's particle system before. I have done lots of that in After Effects, but this was my first time actually doing 3D particles in this software. I took basic primitives, used those as particle emitters where I would have them sort of send out a burst of particles over a very limited number of frames. And by making sure to include the robot and the floor in collisions, I ended up with sparks that would kind of burst out every time he would get hit, 
bounce around until they kind of fade away. Every time I had it kind of finished, I would bake the simulation. That way it wasn't trying to constantly recalculate as I scrubbed around and I could move freely in the timeline with just saved information. For whatever reason, of my four Spark simulations, the second one kept disappearing. Like it was baked, it was there, and then it would just be like not visible anymore. And I even rendered a full pass of the entire finished animation later on that didn't have the particles, even though they were baked and in there. So I just would say delete, bake, rebake. It took like eight seconds and then they were back. Very weird. If you know why that happened, please let me know. But at this moment, I had a few extra days and I found myself with a new idea. I wanted to play with Embergen, but you can just open it up and simulate both the effects and the lighting in real time and you can move stuff around dynamically and it just does its stuff. The best part about it is that you can either render it straight from the software or you can export it as a VDB, which comes into software like Blender. So first thing is I just played with it. I did all kinds of stuff, just playing with the basic presets, messing with the color, messing with the physics, messing, just learning how the different buttons work and how these nodes work. You play with it for about 15, 20 minutes and you'll get a pretty good hang of it. And once I figured out how to create emitters and things like that, I actually took the entire animation of the robot. I went back to Maya, I exported it as an Alembic, which I said I wouldn't do, but Embergen doesn't yet support USD. Embergen, if you ever see this, please give me USD. But for now, Alembic it has to be. So I brought the robot animation in and I used that as the emitter to create fire. Eventually I decided, you know what, I don't want a flaming robot, that doesn't make sense for this shot. Maybe I could have him walking through fire or something. And so I started doing stuff where I'd have fire around and he was a collision object. So as he would move around, the wind and you know the forces he was animated to do actually affected the fire around him. This was so, so cool. But shout out to the laptop and the GPU and also just Embergen for being a cool piece of software. This was crazy. This project was not the right fit for this much fire. And so I went through their preset library and started looking through different things I could tweak. They actually have this dust explosion thing, which is super cool. And as a placeholder, I decided to try bringing that into Blender and sure enough, it worked. You can bring in that volume, you can mess with the density, give it shaders, all that, and just have a big dust explosion without having to simulate it inside a Blender. All of this was going to be necessary because I decided I wanted extra laser beams to actually hit the back wall, to miss the robot entirely and then have something cool happening in the background. So it was time to finalize the environment. This is when I grabbed the Future War Zones pack and I started bringing in different stuff. I tried a few different options, whether it was a big outside building or ultimately I decided to go back to sort of the closed corridor. So I pulled various different things, containers and sheets of metal and pipes and things like that. And I just started building out the scene. And instead of just focusing on what's on camera, I made the entire sort of hallway around the robot. Since he's so reflective, I knew that I can't just have like a blank seen on the right off camera because then he won't reflect anything and that could be a problem. Once all this was in Blender, I figured it's time to nail down the lighting. I had tried a lot of different things, but nothing was feeling quite right. It just felt busy. I, I tried different colors, I tried different lighting arrangements and just didn't feel right. Luckily, I had a couple of minutes where I was talking to a friend of mine and he gave me a good suggestion. I had looked at a lot of reference, but he named a movie that I hadn't thought of. Aliens, and he was 100% right. I took that inspiration and I made some tweaks, added some extra lights in there. I decided to go for a very cool blue traditional sci-fi look with the robot having some orange so that every time he'd get hit and we got the orange sparks. So getting feedback from other people you trust, always a good idea. At this point, I decided to render and I ended up with an image sequence that looked like this. Now the problem with this is I still have to do compositing. I wanted to have more glow on the projectiles and on the eyes and things like that. And I didn't realize you can do your compositing like first, like in the compositing nodes area, and then you can render and it'll include all of that work. So I did the whole render, and then I brought that image sequence back into Blender, did all the compositing there, which I've never done before. This was a brand new workflow for me to use the Blender compositor. It was actually really cool. It took a while and a couple of tutorials to get the hang of it, but it's here I made two fairly critical mistakes. The first is that I didn't include depth of field, and I meant to. I wanted to have that, that kind of background blur that you get with a nice camera, and I forgot to turn that on. Uh, and so I figured, oh, I'll do it in compositing, which is where I realized my second mistake. I made this fog cube. This is where the fog comes from in the scene and it doesn't go all the way to the camera. I didn't think it was gonna matter until I looked at my mist pass and it totally messed up the way that that renders. What I was trying to create was sort of like a depth map where the robot in the section right around him is in focus and it goes out of focus the more we go in either direction. Problem is that the foreground and the background ended up being kind of the same color, meaning that the foreground was going to be really out of focus, just like the background was really out of focus. And that gave me this, with sort of this gray value in the very front, and then the robot being a bright white, and then darkness only happening in the back. That worked out fairly well, so I ended up doing additional mask, and then for some reason this like console thing in the back happened to be at the exact same focus of the robot, and I didn't like that. And so I used one more mask to sort of isolate that, 
and just change its like depth blur manually so it felt a little bit further back than the robot. So hopefully you can see that with and without the uh, the blur and all that stuff I did there, um, the background's really in focus without the blur. And when I turn it on, the background goes a little bit more out of focus. There's a little bit of that in the foreground, but it's not as strong up close to the camera as it is back there. Speaking of compositing though, I did render the regular combined denoised pass with everything in it, an ambient occlusion, a mist pass, which was my depth, an emission pass, which is just all the stuff that lights up, and a volume direct pass. And then this is what the image actually looks like with the amount of samples I did. I left the rest up to denoising. So for the effects, just to show you where this came from, the original image looked like this. I added a little bit of glare or glow specifically to anything that was emitting, so all the bright stuff and then I added those into the scene. So you can see before and after. I added a tiny bit of lens distortion, which you can really only see on the edges of frame, which is kind of what I wanted. I wanted a little bit of chromatic aberration and distortion to kind of cancel each other out. Then a little bit of color correction to add some contrast, make him feel a little bit more intense. Uh, and then color grading. I didn't like this like greenish teal color, so I made it a deeper blue more sci-fi vibes. And then that's where all these other nodes came in as I was masking and trying to figure out how to uh, do the blur. That's where this, this background blur comes in and you'll see the background go a lot more out of focus and the foreground stays mostly in focus, but also kind of blurred as well. At the very end, I did one last tiny pass of glare over everything emitting light. And I searched so many websites trying to find the answer to this. Every time you hit render animation in Blender, it tries to like re-render the scene. So it kept trying to like re-render the whole 3D scene and then do my post-processing compositing after. I did not want that. I just wanted to re-render from the EXR image sequence that I had already created. In order to get that working, I went to the output properties, scrolled all the way down, and for post-processing, I turned off sequencer and just head compositing. I don't know if that's exactly the thing that made it work. It seems to be the thing that did it that allowed me to finally hit render animation and it would just render from the compositor and the image sequences and not from the 3D scene from the beginning, if that makes sense. And that's the visuals. To top it all off, a little bit of sound design where I have this massive library of robot and clicking and mechanical sounds that I just decided to have fun with to give you the final result. This process was a ton of fun. And with a little bit more time, I feel like this would be a really awesome mini short. Huge thank you to Razer and NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring this video, for sending the Razer Blade 18 Mercury. I'll have a link to it in the description below and to other NVIDIA Studio laptops that Razer makes if you want to check out the computers to do this type of work. And let me know in the comments if you have any other things that you would have liked to see added to this project, any ideas you had for maybe ways I could have done things better or differently. This was super fun. I'd love to do it again. But thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.